the market rolling over as COVID-19 cases soar in the South and the West, highest numbers since April, what needs to happen to solve this crisis? We know we need testing, where we've made some progress. We know we need contact tracing, still a long way to go there. If hospitalizations keep spiking, some cities may need to go back into lockdown to prevent their healthcare systems from being overwhelmed. Most of all, though, we need a plan, a plan, a plan. So maybe we should take our cue from the states that have already done a terrific job of handling this pandemic. States like Rhode Island, which had a plan. When the Northeast was experiencing the worst outbreak in the world, Rhode Island managed to keep things contained. How'd they do it? Let's check in with Gina Raimondo. She's the governor of Rhode Island to get a better sense of what the country needs to do to get back on track. Governor Raimondo, welcome to Mad Money. Thank you, Jim. It's great to be here. All right, so Governor, you did a remarkable job taking control of the situation. Give us a couple of bullets of how you were able to do it, uh, and including your involvement with the private sector that really helped. Yeah. Well, you're kind to say it was remarkable. It was really just a quick reaction to a crisis. But I think that the core of what we did was innovation, speed, and focus on the facts and practical, concrete solutions. Like you said, a plan. Um, and I have relied heavily on public-private partnerships, uh, extensively. I mean, one of the first partnerships I had was with Salesforce to do our contact tracing, so it could be quickly. Their software is fantastic to do that. Partnered with CVS Health, which is headquartered right here in Rhode Island, to do testing, uh, which has been a huge success. Partnered with SurveyMonkey, which is a company that does surveys, which gives us data so we can stay ahead of it. Partner with Infosys to help us do an app, a crush COVID Rhode Island app for every Rhode Islander to download. So we've been all about innovation. In, I would say innovation is the reason that Rhode Island is in such a great position. Now, you're in such a great position that I was thinking, are you willing to say right now that you would not welcome people, say, from Florida and Texas or other hotspots the way uh, governors in the tri-state area said today? You know, I think it's a reasonable thing what we're doing. So let me give you a picture here, Jim. Okay. Rhode Island was nestled between New York and Boston, two hot spots. We are the second most densely populated state in the country. We were among the hardest hit in America. And so we had to get into action. Today, we are the only state in America that has tested more than 20% of our population and our test positive rate is less than 2%. I've opened this economy two months ago, and we're still seeing a decline in cases. So are you asking me, am I nervous about people coming from places that have a test positive rate or 10 or 15% to our state? Of course I am. And so I'm thinking about either limiting travel or having mandatory testing for people who come from a a hot spot or possibly quarantining. I haven't decided yet exactly how to do this because I want it to be practical and enforceable, but you better believe I'm worried about it because we've worked incredibly hard and I don't want to go backwards. Well, I know the New York Times showed that you had zero new ones on tw the 20th, zero on the 21st. Uh, the 22nd, though, you had 122 and at 23rd, 74. And I was actually wondering whether that was people fleeing from states where they are afraid going to the state that's the best. You know, it's interesting. Very early on in this crisis, I took a, what some would say, heavy-handed approach. I actually used our National Guard to monitor cars coming in from other states, in including New York, to ask them to go into quarantine if they were coming from a place like New York City that was a hotspot. And I did take a little flack at that time for that approach, but the truth of it is, like I've said, Rhode Island's the only state in America where we've tested 20% of the population. Hospitalizations are going down. Business has been open for months. And I have to do everything that I need to in order to keep commerce flowing in my state without hospitalizations going through the roof. All right, well, let's speak about everything you need to. Uh, we all wear masks here. I get, uh, my, I get my temperature checked every day and put my band on proudly when I've got a 98.6. Uh, can I walk around in uh, your stores without a mask? No, you cannot. I would, you're welcome to come, but you ha yes, you know, you have to wear a mask. We have ma mandatory mask wearing, 
and by and large, people are complying. I give a huge shoot out, shout out and a big thank you to the people of Rhode Island. We do inspections every weekend of restaurants, gyms, retail shops. We're seeing 90 plus percent compliance with mask wearing. And it's a bit of a hassle. It's a change, but it really works. All right, just talk about how do you get 95 percent of the people uh, contact traced? Oh, you work at it. Like I said, some of it is embracing innovation. Our partnership with um, Mark Benioff and his team at Salesforce has been a game changer for us. Uh, we have all of our labs entering their information immediately into the Salesforce powered system. We have a huge team of well over 100 people do full time doing nothing but contact tracing. And we have, a, we have very serious protocols around outbreaks. We define an outbreak at any facility, any workplace, as two or more people who have tested positive that are linked. If that happens, we get our team out to that facility. We have rapid testing of everyone, get everyone into isolation and contact tracing. So it, it's really what you said. Honestly, Jim, this isn't magic. This is good execution of a plan because I never again want to shut this economy down. Right, I so vowed to the people of Rhode Island we would reopen once. All right, how about URI? How about Brown? How about RISD? I, want, I hope they all come back to school. I think they can do it. I've, in fact, just yesterday I was talking with some college presidents. We're holding their hand, helping them, providing support for them with testing and contact tracing so they can go back to school responsibly. Uh, they have to figure out, obviously, they have a challenge with international students. But I've said we're sending our kids back to the public K-12 through public schools. I want them going back to school in the fall. We've said August 31st. And I do think it's all possible if people wear their masks, we keep doing our testing, we're responsible and stay di socially distanced. Well, so you've really, I mean, I, I imagine if I live there, it's kind of like, Normal because you had a plan because you're a venture capitalist because you're a business person. Uh, you work with Mark Benioff. I'm not kidding. I feel like our, we're planless in this country, completely planless. Whether it be Dr. Fauci, whether it be the president, whether it be the CDC, whether it be the Surgeon General, we're, we're planless. You got a plan. Well, yeah, it's true. Also, you left something out. I'm a mother. Any working mom knows you need a plan to get through the day. It's, it's a checklist. You don't mess around. You have people to take care of. Be practical. Innovate. Partnerships. Get it done for the people you serve. I, all I can say is congratulations. And it is a great pleasure to have you on. Governor Raimondo. You're, really you're kind to have me. Thank you. That's Governor Gina Raimondo of Rhode Island. Uh, hey, you know what? A plan is what we really need. Their money's back after the break. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.